More and more people are cooking at home since, well, we're all stuck at home due to the virus. But did you know that cooking is also the number one cause for home fires? It's true. Here to help us serve up fire safety in the kitchen is Susan McKelvey with the National Association of Protection, a Fire Protection Association. Good morning, Susan. Good morning. Thanks so much for being with us. This is an important topic. So what are some of the things that we need to be aware of to prevent fires in the kitchen? So one of the main things to be aware of is that you need to keep a close eye on what you're cooking. Unattended cooking is a leading cause of home fires. Um, we need to stay focused when we're cooking and be alert. Um, that sounds a lot easier in a lot of cases because like you said, we're all at home. A lot of kids are going to school remotely, so they're working from their computers. We're trying to get them uh, linked up on their, you know, Zoom sites. Your other people are trying to work at home, so we have a lot more people trying to do a lot more. It's hectic. It's easy to get distracted. But if people recognize that getting distracted from the, what they're cooking is a risk, then hopefully they'll take the steps to make sure that they stay um, really uh, focus on what they're cooking in the kitchen. Well, uh, help us if we, uh, for with some advice about what happens if there is a fire, what should we do? So if you have a really small fire that you can um, extinguish simply by turning off the heat source in a lot of cases that um, can be effective. If you have something like a pan fire that involves oil, you always want to make sure when you're frying that you have a lid nearby so that you can slide the lid over the pan um, to help extinguish the flames and then promptly turn off the heat source and wait for the pan to completely cool down before carefully opening the lid and checking to see um, that the flames are out. If there are still flames put the lid back on and call the fire department. Um, at NFPA, our priority is people's safety. You know, things can be replaced, but people can't. So if you have a fire that isn't safely able to be put out by one of those means, then um, get out with anyone else who's in your home and call the fire department for help. Well, we all have uh, kids and grandkids cooking in the kitchen with us, and we love that. But how do we keep them safe and still allow them to enjoy the pleasures of cooking? Sure. So if you are going to be cooking with your children, you obviously want to be there and monitoring them really carefully and making sure that they're engaged in activities that keep them away from heat sources. But in general, if you are cooking and you have kids or pets who are just, um, you know, uh, around the area, you want to make sure that they understand that they need to stay well away from the actual cooking area. So we recommend creating a three foot safety zone for kids and pets that they can't enter when you're cooking and for really young children. Children, you can even mark on your floor with tape or some other markers to show um, kids they can have a visual sense of the area they need to stay away from. But another good tip is to push in your pot and pan handles um, to make sure that if someone does come into the area that they can't get easily knocked over um, because that obviously can create a problem with uh, fires and burns as well. Susan, do you have a website where our, our viewers can go to learn more, get some tips from you? We do. So firepreventionweek.org um, is our website uh, for the campaign. We have all sorts of checklists and safety chip sheets and other resources for um, people and um, of all ages uh, to help cook safely. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you. We'll be back with more local lifestyles after this. Stay with us.